Our scripture reading this morning comes from the first five verses of the first chapter of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Happy New Year. Oh my goodness. Did you ever think that you would live to see 2020? No? When, when did you have the impression you wouldn't live to see 2020? There's somebody that's just a little bit overburdened. Do we need to send prayer out to you right now? I'm serious because growing up, it was the stuff of science fiction to think that we would be living in 2020, right? I'm just asking, where are the hovering cars to pick us up? That's my question. They're coming. They're coming. Thank you. Thank you. That's good news. That's good news. Well, I have just a few words for you that, that I was able to, to grab a hold of out of the many thoughts that, that just went through my scrambled brain this week as I did like many and fended off disease. Any one of you want to shake my hand today, you're going to get my elbow. How's that? Not in the ribs, but we'll do the elbow check if you don't mind. And uh, if you don't mind, I may need a little bit of water to finish today. But uh, here's where we start in 2020. We start at the beginning of the Bible and for this month, I'm thinking that we should probably look at the word love and then put another adjective after it. What do you think? So if we look at Genesis today and we look at the word love and then we also realize that there is a text in the Bible that says God is love, then you'll know a little bit about where my mind has been in thinking and you'll see that number one today, we want to look at the word generously. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and the, the, the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. I was talking with my cousin last night, and she mentioned that in a church far, far away from us, you know, like far, far Loma Linda away from us, uh, they were talking about my father-in-law, Harold Coffin. Some of you know my dear wife, and she's somewhat an, a, an unassuming person sometimes, and you don't know that her father was this great scientist because he never went around with a big trumpet fanfare saying, ha, 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 I'm this PhD from, you know and you should listen to me. But he did some incredible science in the area of paleontology, and he spent a lot of summers in Yellowstone. How many of you have trekked to one of the most beautiful of our national parks? If you haven't, put it on your list for 2020. Because Yellowstone has a caldera Anyone want to raise their hand generously and say, what's a caldera? A caldera is, okay, a caldera is a volcanic eruption site that is basically all that is left after the mountain has blown off. So it becomes a valley. So when you go into the huge, huge caldera, that is the valley in Yellowstone, you don't know that you're in this thing because it's so big. But if you're like my wife, who 
grew up with her father going to Yellowstone every year. It was something of interest to watch in 2012 that what we, we have a new genre for movies. It's cheesy disaster movies, okay? Hollywood loves to you know, paint pictures about how the world is going to end. And of course, 2012, the Aztec calendars supposedly said the world was going to end. And so they had to come up with a cheesy disaster movie, which is cheesy, okay? And part of it is filmed in Yellowstone because, of course, that was one of the areas where the, the, the stuff was happening in the movie that they wanted to show off. Now... I don't recommend movies necessarily, but I will tell you that the seismology and the geology and the volcanic activity and the movement of the tectonic plates that happened in that movie were not far-fetched. In fact, they were quite possible. And as I think back to the years that my wife spent, the summers that she spent with her father doing uh, uh, research on petrified wood, did you know? Well, now you do. There is petrified wood in Yellowstone. You think, well, Yellowstone's in the middle of the country. Yes, yes it is. And there was a cataclysmic event that caused the world to be underwater. But I digress. Because this beautiful world that my father-in-law spent his lifetime discovering how it got into the shape that it is in now was at one time perfect and came from the very mind this is the idea behind the phrase fiat creation it can it comes from the very mind the very essence of the the god that that claims to be jesus that God that you, that you clasp your hands to at night and say, Dear Jesus, that same God has, has the mind that, that thought our world into existence. And if you, if you care to, to break open your scriptures, and if you don't have them, there are a few provided from you in front of you. And I want to thank Levon, who always brings to my attention the ones that have been damaged, and I try, to, I try to heal them. But if you look at the very first words, which always brings my father-in-law to mind, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was on the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, here he goes, he said, he speaks, he speaks, and things happen when he speaks. This is the power, this is the majesty, this is the unbelievable, this is the unknowableness of this God. Let there be light. There are physicists that have spent their entire careers figuring out what light is and how it happens. The word fission comes to mind when I think of light. Nuclear. Let there be light, and, li and there was light. God saw that there was light, and he said, it's good. I mean, act one, light. As opposed to darkness. No, you don't have just darkness. Now you have light, and he creates light. Saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness, God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. So when you say good day, and you say good night, you are actually using words that God created. The evening and the morning were the first morning, the first day. And verse 6, and God God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, a, a, a separate between, uh, let the waters to separate water from water. Okay, so God made the expanse and to separate the water under the expanse from the water above it. So now what you have is light, you have a separation piece, and you have water and water. 
keep that in mind because what we were just talking about as far as Yellowstone and as far as the flood is concerned is the reverse engineering of that. So God made the expanse, separated water from the water above, water below, verse 7, and it was so, and God called the expanse sky. Sky. Again, when we, when we look into the sky, we are looking into a created void. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. So, again, just, you know, sanctified imagination. You're there beside God. He's doing this thing, and you have this expanse. You don't know what this, this void is going to be. He's calling it sky, but there's water underneath. And so, out of the water comes the dry ground. The water is gathered into one place and still to this day you can go to Newport Beach, you can go to any beach on the Californian shore and the waves stop on the beach. Is that natural? According to this scripture it is that they would only come so far and no further happens at creation, let dry ground appear, and it was so God called the dry ground land and gathered waters, he called them seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. Uh, I think this is important to say that Sometimes I actually listen to those people who are telling you to buy stuff at Costco. It was, a, it was a downfall that I had one moment when a lady handed me the opportunity to try a cluster of seeds encased in chocolate. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I had to have two bags. Uh, one was for me and one was for my sister-in-law. Yeah, I did. I put it in a box uh, of things that they left behind when they came to see us at Christmas time. Or, yeah, and, 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 and then I, I sent it off to them. And I, I hope she's enjoying them. Because they put on the top superfood. <laughs> yeah, when was that superfood made? When was that, that, that opportunity to have seeds encased in the, the gooey substance that comes from other seeds. Yes, chocolate is vegan. Yes, chocolate is uh, also uh, goes through a process from fresh to not so fresh. Watch it sometime. You'll, you'll add it to your diet if it's 70% pure or not. It actually has medicinal purposes, and you think I'm kidding. You just have to do your reading and know that, no, I wasn't indulging too much, but I was eating seeds, superfoods that were created by a generous God. Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees, and the land uh, bore fruit with seed in it, according to their various kind. And it was so, and the land produced vegetations, plants bearing seeds according to their kind, bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and morning, and that was the fifth day, the third day. The reason I wanted to start 2020 with the book of Genesis and the recounting of the creation by our God of the environment that we take for granted is because I think that we are very ready to say, you know what, God is love. And we 
you usually don't turn that one around and say, love is God. But we would probably say, love is God-like. Or, but could we just say, love comes from God. God's character is love. And that anything lesser than what comes from God is not love. So where do we get this idea of who God is and what that love entails? Well, I thought the only, the, the, the best possible way that, that I could express that would be to say, let's look at creation. And so here we are looking at creation and we're saying, my goodness, this, this grand expanse of who God is and what he does in his, in his creation of this world speaks mightily of generosity. He doesn't, he doesn't just do one kind of seed-bearing plant. He doesn't just do one kind of fruit. Okay, I could probably get three answers right now. What's your favorite apple? Fuji. Fuji. I'm with Honeycrisp. Anyone else? Okay. So, I, I mean, we have followed suit as humankind and we have expanded on the theme that God started by making many more kinds of fruit with seeds in it. Why? Because God is generous. He didn't just say, okay, there's only going to be one apple. Oh, shucks. Eve messed that. No, Adam, you, oh, really? No, he didn't say that. God made apples. Yeah, we believe, and it's tradition to say that it was an apple that was in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but we don't know that for sure. It's, it's just tradition. So the apple kind of gets this bad rap because it happened to be the one fruit that, you know, <laughs> got picked by Satan to sit in the tree and look like a snake and then tempt Eve and ruin this entire situation that God so generously put together for us. He didn't want, he didn't want that to happen. Believe me, he didn't want that to happen. And he had warned the pair to stay away from whatever tree that was, apple or not. But the good news is, my friends, that even after they decided not to trust him, he continued to be generous. I mean, look at today. I mean, look at, look at Southern California right now. I mean, everybody in America who has 14 inches of snow or more wants to be in Southern California right now. Unless, of course, you're a snowboard, snowboarding person and, 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 of course, you love the fact that there's over 100 and something inches of snow in the snowpack at Big Bear right now, and you would not want to be at the coast. You would want to be at Big Bear, but then this is California, and we can, we can be surfing one minute in Newport, and we can get in our Suburban and drive up to Big Bear and go skiing in the afternoon. Yes, this is the state that has it all. We're generous with what God has given us, Right? Because this is the joy of being in a place where today the, the, the generous sunshine that is lighting our lives and making us feel optimistic about 2020 has been provided by him who made the earth in the first place. So this, this generosity that we see in creation is continuing day after day after day after day. Well, here we are, it's 2020, and I don't know about you, but even in the parking lot this morning, we were discussing the fact that there were helicopters overhead and that there's been a plane crash in Placerita Canyon. Uh, we, hope, we hope everyone's okay. And we were also discussing the fact that last week there was a church shooting in Texas. And I want to personally thank those I was talking to about the fact that we have decided 
that as we meet together, we have to be vigilant and that we will need people on duty as we meet together. Why? Because we live in a world in 2020 where people bear arms and bear grudges and crazy things happen. So even as we bask in the glory of God and we we enjoy his generosity with us, we at the same time are here in this valley, yes, figuratively and literally, and we still have the reality of the chaos of this world. I was struck this week by uh, something that came across my feed on, on Facebook. Definition of an, a, a, a pessimist. Anyone, anyone want to hazard, hazard a guess? Uh, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. Okay, I heard, I heard a cackle, at least one over here. That, that's good. You got it. Somebody, somebody says something to you, and if your immediate reaction is reasons why we can't, you just might be a pessimist. You know, at the beginning of a year like this, uh, one hopes that even in the midst of the chaos that we live day to day, we could actually come up with some sort of optimistic ideas that we could cling to, maybe? So what's the definition of an optimist, then? You know, you, you wordsmith people, you know that it means that we're just going to turn those two words around, right? You're right. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Do you think God, because if we believe he knows everything, and he does, would he mind if we would ask him today, why did you make the world when you knew that it was going to fall into chaos? He might just tell you, I'm optimistic. And then we would have to say, well, why are you optimistic? And I'm going to put to you this morning that I believe that he is optimistic because he is generous. And he's generous because his power has no end. He knows what his capabilities are. So when we come to him and and we are doubtful that he can actually do something, I'm sure that he chuckles. Oh, that little difficulty that you think is Everest? It's really just a molehill to me. And we say, but you're God. And he says, okay, well, your choice is to trust my perspective or to keep on with your perspective. So I guess I was challenged by this, this thing on my feed and and I, I started thinking, how, how can, can I change? How can I change from being pessimistic about the difficulties around me to being more optimistic? And that's when I chose the title for today. Love generously. Love generously. See, it goes like this. I think it's I think it's a fairly easy progression, and believe me, this, this just came in a rush, so if it's complicated, I'm sorry. If we say that God is love, and that love is from God, and that because it's God, we're talking about boundless, we're talking about beautiful, we're talking about uh, bottomless, you know, like bottomless fries. Don't you love that at Red Robin? I just love it, Okay. They make a loss on me every time. This is God's love. It, 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 it's, it's, there's no end to it. These are the characteristics of this God that, that creates us out of his head, out of his thoughts. 
from this magnificent, never-ending storehouse, God's love comes to us generously. And it struck me that the generosity is because of the boundlessness. Okay? What about seeing things more optimistically? I think God is an optimist and he, he wants to help us to be optimists too. So he offers opportunities and sees what we, what we do with them. He offers us opportunities to love generously. To be like him and also to have his same attitude of, I know that there's way more where that comes from, so therefore I can be generous. I mean, let's, let's face it. Uh, 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 generosity is a whole lot easier when you know that you're never going to be bankrupt. Is that not true? I mean, when we're young, we don't know about mom and dad's bank account, and when we go out to eat, I must admit this has been something that irks me sometimes about my own children, they will order the most expensive thing on the menu. <laughs> they don't know. They just like what they like, right? And, and they're just so pleased that you're taking them out to eat. They're not the ones who keep the budget. They're not the ones who worry about the fact that there is an end to the resources. You see the thinking? That means that I'm Scrooge. You know, because I'm thinking, why do you always choose the... When I should be saying... You know, I'm so glad you chose the most expensive drink at Starbucks. I really am. Because I'm so happy to have an opportunity to be generous. I don't, I'm not, see, I'm not thinking about the fact that, you know, I, I might not have the money to be generous. Isn't it, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to live like that? Well, guess what? If... If we believe that, that love comes from God and, and, and it's, it's the force that runs the universe and that there is no end to it, then what's holding us back from sharing it generously? One of my first sermons as a pastor was the gospel according to the jelly bean jar. And the idea was... If I keep the jelly beans in the jar, they're going to be stale. But if I share them, what does that mean? Well, it can mean two things. One, I'm going to run out of jelly beans. That would be the fearful view, the pessimistic view. The other view would be the optimistic view, which is, I've got more room in the jar for more jelly beans. See the difference? If, if, if I say, God... You've given me this many jelly beans to share. I'm going to share generously because I know that you've got a dump truck waiting out back to refill my jar any time it gets empty. In fact, it probably won't ever get empty because it's got a hose hooked up to it that is feeding it with more jelly beans. God is love. Love comes from God. Love is boundless, bottomless, beautiful. Love never ends. I mean, that, that, changes, that changes our attitude completely about being pessimistic or optimistic. It changes our attitude about love and how we can share it generously if we believe there is no end to it. We can afford, this is my nice word for you in, 2020, we can afford to be generous with his love. Would that shock you? Would that change you from a pessimist to an optimist in one quick lesson? I don't know. I, I don't even know about my own heart. We can afford to be generous because here's, here's another piece to this. 
if we are stingy, if we have stingy love, is it really love? Is, is it really God's love if we're stingy with it? If we're thinking it's us, then I'm just here to tell you, I think you've disconnected from that unlimited source and you've connected to a very limited source. So, so as we look at this idea of love and we look at the fact that one of the characteristics of the God of the universe from creation until now is generosity, then we can love generously. We can love generously. We can afford to be generous with our love, with his love, because there ain't no spending limit. It's not a credit card that says when you get to this point, you can't anymore. I mean, I, I have heard out of my own mouth sometimes that there are limits to what I am willing to do as far as love is concerned, and that's when I, 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 I start feeling fearful. So what I will leave you with today is this. Perfect love casts out all fear. If you hold on to those words and, and every time you are tempted not to be generous and you start thinking about why you don't want to be generous with your love. First of all, remember it's not yours. Second of all, remember it has no limit. Third of all, remember that if it's stingy, it may not be love. It might even be blasphemy. Wouldn't want to do that in 2020, would we? Blaspheme call ourselves followers of the way, users of God's love in this world, spreaders of God's love in this world, only to find out that we're not spreading his love, but we're spreading some stingy substitute. We can afford, we can afford to be generous with this love. We can afford to give it away because there is no limit. Now, 2020 is here, and I'm sure that we could all get very creative with how we're going to do our visioning for 2020. It's a wonderful time to be punning about vision and 2020 vision. But we always say that it's hindsight. What I'm looking for is foresight. I'm hoping that in 2020, as we look forward, that we can have very clear vision. Let me ask you to do something as we close today. Take a minute. Think about three situations. They may be people. They may be just situations in which God is calling you to be generous. Generous with his pocketbook of love. With his credit card of love. You got those? Three people, maybe. Three situations. And then ask yourself, was, was there a little twinge at all when you thought about that person? Could I actually love more generously? And then maybe you thought, oh, no, I, I, I just can't. 
I'm, I'm going to pray for us right now, and I'm going to pray for the power of God in us to love generously the people in our lives. Yeah? Father in heaven, God, on behalf of my family congregation here today, I, I just want to ask you that the people that we've been thinking about in this moment, the situations that we have been presented with here, we, we have an opportunity to be optimistic and to love generously or to be filled with fear and pessimism and to see these difficulties as the people that we interact with. And God, I, I want to lay all of that at your feet right now and just ask that you would empower us going forward to hear your voice, to hear your call to love generously. I pray this in the name of the Creator God who gave light and seeds and land and sea and still does. In His name I pray. Amen. Happy New Year. <laughs>